As single card graphics solutions become more and more powerful, we're seeing many builders ditching the bulky full and mid tower cases with multi GPU setups in favor of smaller systems that still pack a powerful punch. But with most top tier graphics cards having sometimes ludicrous space requirements and generating lots and lots of heat, fitting them into something like an ITX chassis can be a challenge. With that in mind, AMD delivered upon this world the Radeon R9 Nano, a small form factor graphics card that promises performance on par with full size flagship Radeon cards. But can Team Red deliver and give us a truly first class gaming experience in such a tiny little package? Stay tuned to find out and like this video if you want us to do more theoretical graphics card comparison videos in the future. Very vague, I know. The Mastercase 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Despite the official name of just Radeon R9 Nano, the Nano is part of the R9 Fury series of graphics cards from AMD, which also includes the R9 Fury, the top-end water-cooled R9 Fury X, and despite the Nano being much smaller and less bulky than the Fury X, it shares the same GPU, with 4096 stream processors and 64 compute units. The only difference being that the Nano has a peak clock speed out of the box of 1000 MHz, which is 50 less than the Fury X. The Nano also has the same memory configuration as the Fury X with 4 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory, aka HBM, running at 500 megahertz on a 512 gigabyte per second memory bus. However, where the Nano sets itself apart is its cooling and power delivery systems. Unlike some other reference design cards from AMD we've seen, the Nano has its heatsink fins oriented horizontally along the card instead of radially out of the card. You'd see a radial design set up uh, very often on Intel stock CPU coolers, and they did this, they moved to horizontal, to minimize obstructions and make the cooler function more similarly to a blower style solution. AMD is targeting a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius while gaming, with this card throttling at 85 degrees Celsius. The Nano is also a lot less power hungry. Peak, peak board power is rated at 175 watts compared to the 275 watt draw of the Fury and Fury X. The improved cooling and reduced power consumption combined with the space saving benefits of HBM, which is physically integrated into the GPU package, means that AMD was able to make the Nano PCB only six inches long. So the card only extends as far as the end of your PCI Express slot on your motherboard. Do keep in mind though, if you're interested in dropping the Nano into your ultra small system, that the power connector, a lone 8-pin PCIe input, is oriented on the side of the card, not on the top, meaning you'll have to factor in some extra length there uh, for your plug coming off of your power supply. With that said, let's have a closer look at the card itself. Starting on the front, you'd see a matte black metal shroud that looks quite similar to what we saw on the Fury X, except of course that the Nano is an air-cooled card, so there's a single 90 millimeter fan on the front to cool everything down. Do note that if you pick up a reference Nano, the heatsink and fan are actually integrated into the shroud and therefore are not easily removable should you be interested in modding the card. The heatsink itself features the aforementioned horizontal fins and no heat pipes, which AMD decided to omit to keep the weight and bulkiness of the card to a minimum while still keeping the cooling good. The back of the BCB is bare, though it does have a matte black finish for a clean look. Moving on to the top, we see a fairly understated design with the Radeon logo and only a small part of the heatsink peeking through the black shroud. And then the side of the card is open to allow case fans to help move air across the heatsink and also includes that lone 8-pin PCIe power connector we mentioned earlier. On the back, we see one HDMI and three display outputs. Note that this doesn't have any DVI outs and we didn't see any adapters in the box, so make sure you pick one up if you'll be using DVI with this card. Now on to performance. We used a fairly standard test suite of Tomb Raider, Crisis 3, Far Cry 4, and The Witcher 3 for our standard performance benchmarks. Then we just added on Firestrike Ultra, which was a little aggressive, but interesting regardless. Then we did our standard skybox testing in Crisis 3 to test heavy low temperature and system wattage from the wall. One very important factor to remember when looking at these numbers is the size of the Nano. Yeah, sure, it's trading blows with the GTX 980, and it's being beaten by the Fury, both of which are cheaper, but this thing is absolutely tiny in terms of size, while the 980 and Fury are both center of attention case monsters. 
This shows in power draw as well. The only card that beats the Nano in terms of power draw that we tested is the now old 285 Compact from Sapphire, which to be fair, is in a much lower tier of performance, which shows very well when looking at the graph comparison of system wattage per frame. Even though the Nano has a little bit more power draw than the 285 Compact, its system watch per frame is under half, which is pretty great. This leaves us with a card that when compared to a 390X Strix Edition, performs better, runs cooler, and draws significantly less power from the wall, all while being much smaller, but at an increased price of $200. Which brings us to our last question, price. Yes, okay, you got me. It's not exactly a cheap card. At $650, it's got a price tag to it. It's dollars per frame is not really that great, or price per performance is not really that great. But I honestly don't think that's the reason why someone would be interested in this card. The card isn't trying to be the best price per performance card on the market. It's trying to be a badass in terms of power consumption and performance while containing itself in a small package. And that, honestly, basically was my conclusion. The Nano is small, the Nano is fast, and the Nano draws an impressively low amount of wattage from the wall. It does all of this while, yes, being a little expensive, but not to an impossible degree. And I could see a lot of small form factor builders looking in this direction soon, especially with the number of case manufacturers coming out with smaller and smaller cases every year with some very interesting ones on the horizon. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one small snippet of code, you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. They even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven programming languages. They make it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more all with a single integration. They have quick, knowledgeable developer support if you have any questions. And if you want to learn more and get your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus, linked in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through the forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click the little button in the top right-hand corner to check out this video where I review the Ultimaker 2 Extended.